Hello. Welcome to another episode of Season 16 of The Horrific Podcast. We're two friends who live in different places but share a love for scary movies. In each episode, we both watch the same movie on our own and then record a conversation together about what we liked, what we hated, if we were scared, and maybe even some larger truths about why people watch horror movies in the first place. This season, the theme is B-Movies for C-Students. We're taking a break from the current trends toward elevated horror and examining the history of horror B-Movies and how they've developed over time. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the episode. Continuing our journey through the history of B-Horror movies, and again, it seems like we keep coming back to this idea of creativity around marketing and distribution. Going all the way back to Blood Feast, where they would hand out barf bags to people attending the movie, or even like take out a lawsuit against themselves just to get headlines and publicity mm-hmm. and get people interested. From there, all the way to the VHS revolution, where you could basically release stuff that didn't have to play by the ratings rules, <laughs> yeah. to the dawn of the internet, we seem to be firmly in this world where you can create a movie, generate a bunch of hype, do something interesting with your distribution, and then find a way to get it in front of people. And in the 2000s, I think we saw more and more where that way of getting it in front of people was film festival. And that honestly reminds me a lot of music in the early 2000s, yeah. where if you got into the right tournament or showcase, you could kind of just like get signed on the spot if you played a good set. And I feel like in the festival circuit in the 2000s, they were starting to make more space for like genre type films. Mm-hmm. And so if you got in the right festival at the right time, you could get your movie picked up by a major distributor for like a wide release pretty much on the spot. I miss those days, man. (laughs) It was a different time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, we talked last week about how with Bubba Hotep, you know, it was more successful in that it was sort of exclusive until it hit the DVD market and then it cashed in on all the hype. But this week we're going to talk about a movie that actually made it to major theater distribution based off of its premiere at a film festival and getting picked up. And this movie is called You're Next. And I did not know anything about it, mm-hmm. but I was reading about but or like most influential uh, B-horror movies of the 2010s, which is a pretty short list. <laughs> 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 um, but that's where I got into reading about this one. And I guess it had its world premiere at the 2011 Toronto International Film Festival, which had a Midnight Madness program. Ooh. And that is on the the TIFF website. It says Midnight Madness is the wild side. Screenings of the best in action, horror, shock, and fantasy cinema. And after it showed there, it got picked up like immediately by Lionsgate. So when this movie started and they showed like the Lionsgate logo, I was like, oh, did I mess up? Nah. It just uh, was not made by one of the big film production companies, but it was picked up by a very major distributor. So if that logo looked familiar, that's what was going on. So, yeah, I think we've really come full circle. Like there was a time when B movies were just this sort of like stigmatized afterthought, but now we're at the point where they're being well-received at well-renowned film festivals and being picked up for wide distribution, you know, by the, these bigger companies. And it's just, kind of cool that there's another way that successful and creative movies can get out into the world that don't involve, you know, going through kind of the more standard Hollywood system. Yeah. And you know, it's, it has, it has to also do with the fact, I mean, so this came out in 2011. So you, you wonder also like, this is just the equipment being better and, you know, getting cheaper also play a role and why it's kind of harder to find like B movies newer B movies because some, some of the older B movies you could tell because the quality of footage that was being shot was terrible and stuff. So now it's like, are, are companies, are we going to start seeing a lot more? Is the quality of all films going to be like B movies moving forward because we're trying to save a penny 
I, you know, I don't know, but I think the, the recording equipment also has to play some sort of role into why we saw this one picked up by a major uh, distribution company too. Like there was less work they had to do for, for a, 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 a good finished product. Yeah, like a theater quality yeah, product yeah, yeah, can yeah. be made on a much lower budget at this point than it, mm-hmm. a relatively much lower budget than in previous times in history for sure. So, yeah, and I think that's really interesting too because we saw where in the very beginning B movies were made by just the other Hollywood studios, and so the quality was actually pretty good from a film perspective. They just would reuse sets and use you know less big name actors and stuff to make them cheaper with the equipment they already had. Mm -hmm. But then when it moved to like poverty row where they were just using the cheapest of the cheap for everything, you actually saw the quality of the movies go way down. Mm -hmm. And then with some of those early self-funded ones, like the, uh, uh, plan nine from outer space. I mean, it was just laughable. So to think that like that was a B movie then, and this is a B movie now, like, man, what a journey. It, it really is. Honestly, did we say what movie we're doing? I don't know that we did. It's called You're Next. And uh, it's not a real descriptive name. No. It really <laughs> pissed me off when you told me that. It caused some confusion when we it were talking about our movie most, pick for the week. <laughs> the most tension that's happened to us in our 20 plus years of being friends. 30 plus years? Bro, we're pushing 30 if we Fuck. haven't done it. Yeah. It was the most tense fight we ever almost got into because I was like, I was like, hey, you were like, do you want to do two? And I was like, sure, but what, what movie? And you said, you're next. And I was like, I picked Bubba Hotep. I was so confused, but I, I just said, got yeah. over. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, I just, got, I just got over COVID last, you know, like I had COVID brain going. And I was like, did I fucking, did I, what? I was so confused. And then, and then I found out, I was like, oh, that motherfucker, I'm going to get him back. Uh, <laughs> and I spent all day trying to get you back with the intro that I couldn't. But, um, yeah, no, very, very, uh, I get the point now. I get the name now. Maybe your next 2011 would have been nice to be told. I eventually just sent a screenshot of the movie poster. Yeah. I don't know how much clearer I could have been. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was perfect setup and everything too. It was cracking up. But yeah, and and honestly, like I think I was set out I set out to that I was like, fuck this movie. Because of that. And I just couldn't. I couldn't. I felt like we might be in your wheelhouse on this one. Yeah. So yeah, obviously lots to talk about with this one. We're going to get into it, but first I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then we will dive into the, I mean, it's not the most awkward story I've heard about meeting your uh, partner's parents, but it's close. (laughs) Details. Perfect. In 2011, filmmaker Adam Wingard debuted his home invasion horror film, You're Next, at the Toronto International Film Festival. Four days later, Lionsgate acquired distribution rights to the movie and would go on to release Your Next in theaters in 2013. This movie tells the story of a family who get together to celebrate the patriarch's retirement, only to find a number of violent men in animal masks who were not on the guest list, but are very much a part of the evening's entertainment. This movie was made on a budget of around $1 million and made over $26 million at the box office. It can currently be rented for streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Here's something. Um, this film was directed by Adam Winger, like you mentioned. Yes. And I didn't realize, that, I don't know if you, he, he, his first like film or feature film, I guess, was one called Homesick. And it had Bill Mosley in it, who was in, I mean, he was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, but he was in the uh, Devil's Rejects. And, oh really? Yeah, he was he was in Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpse, Devil Rejects. He was Otis B. Driftwood. In the beginning, he puts on gnarly Iron Man and in Devil's Rejects, gnarly Iron Man like like mask and stuff. And he, he's shooting. I think he gets killed in it. But um, yeah, just thought it was interesting uh, that, albeit that this has probably been the most 
well, this is obviously the newest B movie that we did, uh, B horror movie that we did. Like he had, Adam had his first film was uh, one of the B movie legends, in my opinion. Yeah. This one also had Barbara Crampton as the mom, and it she did. was in a ton of B horror movies in the 80s and 90s, several of in, which we've watched, including Castle Freak. She was in a, a cramp ton of them, yeah. <laughs> yes, hey, exactly. Hey, <laughs> got him. Where's my Wario laugh now? <laughs> that was pretty good. I, I will give you credit for that one. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was funny to me because for the parts of the movie when she was alive, because you knew she was going to die. I mean, that's just how this was going to go. Uh, <laughs> Thankfully, she cried a lot. Yeah, Jesus. but it it was funny how she just always said the right thing, like that you should actually do in the case <laughs> of home invasion or someone in the house. Yeah. You know, she's she's telling her husband, like, don't go up there. Let's just leave. Somebody's in the house. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I'll go check it out. And it's just like, if Barbara Crampton ever tells you she has a bad feeling about something, you need to run for it. Yeah. And she has more experience with home invasion than p- probably anybody in the history of film. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And you're absolutely right. It was funny. Is I actually did catch it, but that's that's very funny because, like, she was just like, there's someone in here, let's leave. Yes. And he definitely did the exact opposite thing there. That's, that's yeah. hilarious. And yeah. I don't know, like, maybe that's an influence on just being a horror fan in general, but that's, that's funny. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that she was in this one. I mean, I feel like yeah. that was just kind of the, the perfect role. Um, mm-hmm. But even, I guess, before she was in it, I really loved the opening scene. The way that the mm-hmm. woman was walking through the house at night and then the motion sensor lights come on outside. That is so creepy. Yeah. And yeah. that was just like the way it was filmed. Everything about that was just perfect. And that immediately got my attention of, okay, this is something I'm about to need to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, Yeah. Without a doubt. I think like at the start, the thing I noticed about the intro scene was there was like subtle things that were happening. And I'm, I like the fact that answer there, nothing was really answered, but like, you know, like the disgust she had on her face after it was done. And then like sticking around, like there was just so many things that were happening then. And then, you know, the, in real life, you have you you put up uh, motion sensor lights outside. Like the reason for that is so you could see at night. Yeah, yeah. And like you don't think about how like that doesn't mean that you're not going to be worried or concerned about you're you're almost even more concerned because you're like what's what's turning this on, what's turning these lights on, what what's what motion is is it yeah, and, and, right. and that's terrifying to think about so i got a new phobia okay i'm not gonna install motion sensors sens- sensing lights outside my house ever interesting well now that you say that i do have a story that i want to tell you at the end of this episode oh God. that is very relevant but I, I won't get into it till then so people can yeah. fast forward if they don't care we'll just do it at the very end but I do want to say nothing in my notes was changed after the experience last night. So you're going to hear a lot of stuff that weirdly plays into the story. And that is pure coincidence. Oh, snap. So snap, yeah, crap anyway, pop. and I'm fixing to be staying there, man. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll take care of it. It's all okay. good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine. But yeah, but anyway, so yeah, back to the movie, uh, Barbara Crampton tells her husband after she hears something upstairs, <laughs> Wait, not to go up there. Back to the and, movie. I got to cut you off real quick because okay. I just got to yeah. understand this real quick. That first scene, did, that didn't play into like the characters, like the two deaths. Did that play into the like the Davis family? No, except okay. that it was a neighbor. So like when the oh. one of the daughters ran for it later, she like ended up at that house thinking she was going to get That's help. That's right. That's who and it so, was. Yeah, that, okay. that was the only connection that I, I, see I now. with it. I don't think I paid attention to him. I don't know why, what else was on the screen, but that makes so much sense. Okay. 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 Yep. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Yep. Yeah. No. Oh, well, okay. You're already agreed. No, no. I was just saying like, yep, we're clear. We're all gotcha. good. Yep. Don't talk about my friend that way. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. But yeah, so 
the husband does the thing where he's like, oh, no, I'm going to go check it out. And then he just picks up that random, like, towel rack or whatever he was carrying. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, question, you ever seen an old guy walking around with, like, a golf club or a stick like he's actually going to do something with it? Yeah. No. I've seen that a lot. Where it's oh, like a guy, like if a guy's like in the film? walking out in the no, like in a neighborhood. Oh, like oh, there's an old guy who's like out walking by himself, and yeah. he's like, "Oh, nobody's gonna screw with me. I got a golf club." Yeah, yeah, and no, I yeah, can't I stand up straight. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. what are you gonna do with that thing, buddy? Like, you swing at my knees. Yeah, at a certain point, either get out of there or pack something a little more powerful. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying too, though. If I was an old man, I'd be swinging at everyone because if I get punched, you're obviously going to probably die because, you know, whatever. And then those people are grandpa killers. It's one yeah, of the worst. I mean, it just seems like counterproductive to me. It it's really like, is. Like yeah. you, you were demonstrating that you were very delusional in this moment. Yeah. I feel bad for him now that I've made fun of him. No. We'll be there one day, man. Regarding other family members, there is Drake, who, yep. in my notes, is the kiss-ass brother who loves commercials. Yes. No one likes those people. <laughs> no one likes those people, man. He I was, was really good. He was played by Joe Swanberg, who I feel like I've seen in a billion things – before like it felt like really recognizable face but like i couldn't necessarily put my finger on it where where like i knew him from like he just seemed i don't know just seemed like, like a familiar seen, yeah, yeah i guarantee i was seen something he was in but i could not th- figure it out last night oh is it grumpy old man no that was jfk in last week's episode Chuck. he said he was in bhs yeah Gotcha. We haven't yeah. seen that one in a while, but yeah. Mm-mm. Anyway, the I was glad they did the opening scene the way they did mm-hmm. because then you have this kind of long, almost like independent drama film where all the children are arriving at the parents' house. Yeah, and it really kind of catches you off guard. Like you still have that underlying sense of dread because you saw the opening. So you kind of have an idea of what's happening at some point, mm-hmm. but they really played into kind of the inner family drama and the way that the brothers didn't all get along and kind of the girlfriend that was the outsider and stuff. And then all of a sudden one of the guys sees something out the window and he goes over to investigate and gets shot in the head. That was gnarly. With a crossbow man. Arrow. Gnarly dude. It was super gnarly. And then the movie just didn't really let up from then on no that's that's when it started but they also added enough of the like family drama for me to be like okay with some of the deaths <laughs> right yeah. you know what i mean like some of them like even that guy i was like Whoa, who is he you know he ain't the yeah. main character. but like it, because it was like there's a huge family fight that's going on at the table huge yes. fight and it's annoying as like hell if Anyway, it's just annoying, you know, but you just have this random guy who's just all of a sudden sees something. He's like, what the heck is that? And he's doing everything he does is what someone naturally would do. If, you know, like, wait, what? I, mean, I think I would probably be like, hey, what the hell is that? To at least someone so yeah. that you get another set of eyes on it. But like everything he did was like common mm-hmm. and then pew, straight through the head and then the whole kind of stumbling back kind of thing. It, it that was a good scene, man. That well, the, the, the opening scene was where I was like, "Ah, shit! This is this is gonna freak me out." And then you know, you forget about a little bit of it because you're trying to figure out like what's going on with you know this family and all this shit. But then that happened, and I was like, "Oh yeah, we're back, baby." <laughs> yeah, and then everything after that, just that whole scene was pure chaos as everyone was Insane. just freaking out, and more arrows are coming through, and there's the breaking glass and the screaming and blood, mm-hmm. and it was just. It, this movie made some really, really intense horror moments, which I enjoyed. Yeah, no, it definitely, it definitely did. And and I also felt like it had the luxury of being almost like the shining where like it, it was a huge house and, but I couldn't tell you the layout. Like yeah, I thought right. the mom was like upstairs. <laughs> I still don't know if she was when she, you know, all this stuff. And um, yeah, it was just gnarly, just confused. It, 
I don't know if they did it on purpose, but it's not like it was a bad thing. Like it worked really well because like you didn't know what was safe and what wasn't safe. And all these people had was this house. And if you think about it, you're like, well, why don't they just, you know, go into a room that doesn't have windows or whatever, even though they said there wasn't any. Um, but it's a house. You could burn it down. Like it, yeah, it's, right. it, it was just a, it's a sketchy situation. Yeah. And again, I thought it was pretty funny when they're all sort of in the entryway and oh, then yeah. Amy decides she's going to make a run for yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, there was one person who told her she shouldn't do it. And that it was a bad idea aside from the Australian girlfriend. Yeah. Do you know who that was? Mm-hmm. Home invasion veteran, Barbara Crampton. She knows what she's doing, man. She absolutely does. She was yeah. right every time. But yeah. yeah. When she immediately just got clotheslined by that piano wire, I was like, okay, that's, well, see, that that's was, the movie we have here. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing, because you knew something was going to happen. Just because the way it was shot, I think they did it on yes, purpose. It was absolutely. a slow motion. You knew, but what, what, I, what I was expecting was an arrow to come and just like, you know, just straight dead shot to the forehead or something like that. And then I think she gets like a step out, and I'm like, wait a second, like, she about to be tackled? And then, boom, straight into the wire, Yeah, uh, perfect height, cut her cut her cut her throat she was she was going and she's like sitting there like gurgling mayhem's going on it it was just gnarly Ugh. yeah yeah there were a lot of, of scenes gnarly. that were just really really gnarly mm. um the another one that stood out to me was when the australian girlfriend got the knives from the kitchen and is talking to everybody like how they need to defend the house and what they should do. And then just out of nowhere, one of the guys in the animal masks busts through the window and attacks her. Yeah. But then she fights back and like wins decisively. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then she just turns around and t- pulls his masks off and is like, does anyone know this guy? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that was so funny to me. Well, but like it, that it, scene went from being so intense to her just being so flippant about it. That I it, think that it, was it. I think yeah. that, yeah, that's definitely the thing. Why it was, because like, same exact thought. I mean, I also had the thought of like, who the hell is this lady? You know, like yeah. what they should have probably asked early on too. But like, um, yeah, it was, it just caught you off guard. You're like, what the heck? How does she, um, yeah, I think the scene where, was it, I'm trying to think of what her name was. And I don't think it was, I don't think it was Aaron, but it was the girl who ran for the house, the second girl that ran for the house that made it to the house, but the neighbor's house. But yeah, I think her name was Kelly, maybe. Kelly. Okay. So whoever that was, yeah, whoever that was. So I think she was the one that stabbed the guy's hand into the window, right? Was it that her? No, yeah. I think that was the Australian girl. That was Aaron. Okay. Aaron, that makes yeah, sense yeah. because at the end of towards the end of the film, she notices that the guy's gone, but that scene itself too. Cause like, that was just the quick, like she just was like, yo, boom. And she yeah. like stabbed his head to the thing and he's screaming. And I think that part, it was really important with the film because like, first off you hurt the guy, you know, the, the home intruder and, and, you know, strangers has multiple home and, uh, people that are breaking in, but like, you don't necessarily know how many or what we got here. And right. you hear him scream and his scream sounds normal. Like it sounds like a normal dude screaming in pain. And yes. for, for me, it almost took like, could this be like a supernatural? Like what? Cause I knew nothing going into this film. Uh, but you know, it kind of, I don't want to say it made things less scary, but like it just made them hu- more human than than what I expected, I guess. And it was just, it was strange because you're like, wait, this is just normal people that are doing it. It has to be multiple. There has to be, you know, that kind of math that you're figuring out in your head with it. But, um, yeah, I think that that was, that was needed for sure. Yes. And that I think was a unique element about this one in that a lot of times when you have like the group of, you know, college kids or teenagers played by 20 somethings that Mm -hmm. are in a cabin. And then there's the home invasion sort of formula or there's the family in the home invasion formula. It's really like you have these almost unbeatable outside actors who they're just trying to escape from. Yeah. 
but in this case, you realize like, oh, one of the people on the inside is actually quite qualified to participate in defending herself yeah. Yeah. from all this. And so that just adds this whole other element. And I felt like this movie, because we always talk about managing the pace being the hardest thing to do in horror, because making people feel that sense of urgency with a film and to sustain that over an extended period of time is just difficult. And so the way that this one kept introducing new story elements, I feel like kept it fresh that way because you were almost like caught off guard. Like in that scene, when all of a sudden she just turns around and kills the guy, nothing had led you to expect that she was going to do that. And then later on when the, there's that crazy scene where the power comes on and the guy comes out and like slits the dad's throat. Mm Mm-hmm. Felix and Z didn't seem at all surprised. And then the animal mask guy comes out and is talking to them. And you're just like, wait, what's happening? And so Mm -hmm. then there's this element of like, who can I trust versus who can't I trust and everything as it goes along and introducing those little plot points that didn't even have to have a bunch of like backstory or over explanation. It just was a way of kind of like keeping it interesting and making sure that you never felt like you had the whole thing figured out. Mm -hmm. And like, it wasn't just super predictable the whole time, which I think a, home invasion horror in 2011 would be at risk of doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it would for sure. And I think that, I think that we're getting to a point where it might be harder and harder to have like twists happen in films. So you, you're, the internet's going to let you know spoilers before, you know, before it's out there or before you have a chance to watch or whatever. And in a way, like it almost is, in, in my opinion, it's almost just like another way of having, um, having like a, a, a surprise note. Like we knew that something was going to happen to the, to the gal that was running out the front door at the very beginning of the film. Like you knew something was going to happen, but just not what you expected. And I think that that little twist is, is good enough. And, I think that having a twist was big on the writer director's mind with this film, obviously with, you know, what we run into uh, at the end when you, you find out yeah. who, who all is involved. But, you know, I think it's, you know, I think maybe if you add enough of these micro twists, it kind of you know, makes it hard to explain all the things that are happening and, and doesn't ruin it. If, if, you know, someone reads too much on the internet or see something they shouldn't. So it's, yeah, I think it's, it, I wasn't bothered by any of the twists at all. There was definitely a few jump scares I wasn't necessarily bothered by either. And I think that, um, I think that that's strictly because it was just well thought out. Like it was just, they planned it well. Or yeah, had it was a good up. script. Yeah. Yeah. So or a good plot, good writing. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only real complaint I had with it is that <laughs> we've talked before about how movies, some movies don't age well because it's just like this movie would never work if anyone had a cell phone. And in this one, at least they were saying like, well, the phones are being jammed and that's why nothing's going through. And so that was like a thing that they made it a point to mention, but then also the cell phone like mattered to the plot later. So it's not like they were just ignoring cell phones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like a thing that everybody would have at that point. So it makes sense that that would be part of the story. Another thing though, that I think, could end a lot of home invasion horror movies is if either side had a gun. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. movie could have been real short. Uh, 100%. If either side wasn't just using melee weapons for some reason. But I, and I was going to say like early on, like I think it was actually, I think it was actually kind of cool that it was done without it. Um, I mean, you know, you saw the crossbow, um, but that's, you know, the silent weapon, but like, and and you kind of understand why, like at the end of the, like at the end of the film, you understand why, in my opinion, why like even the bad guys wouldn't have, um, you know, guns, you, you know, because obviously you don't want to attract attention to it, but you especially don't want to attract attention if it's going to be, if you're trying to fraud in, anyone, you know. So it's just a, there was a lot there, but yeah, a gun definitely would have solved some of the problems here. For sure. Yeah, like if anybody on the inside of the house had a gun. It, well, <laughs> you well, know what I mean? Like yeah, I mean, we saw, <laughs> we saw what Aaron did without him. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. yeah, let's give her a gun. That, that'd be fun. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Sheesh. I also like, too, there was like a scene 
early in the film or maybe mid way through and they're like let's just go to the basement i think it was even recommended by um felix and or z i don't, I don't remember it's like let's go to the basement and hide so there's no wind or are there are there any rooms with no windows and they said no well the basement in in like well we could go down there and just like like up and Aaron's response or someone's response was really quick and very like, no, they could kick the door in and, you know, throw gas down, burn the place or something. It was like, yeah. Oh shit. That was just like, in my opinion, that's, that was like a, you know, don't go upstairs comment. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. She's already shifted into like survival mode yeah. and has she, a particular it's set of turned skills. on. Yeah. 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 Uh, it also had like gnarly deaths. The blender. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. I yeah. got a couple that I wanted to talk about that I thought were so good. Yeah. Um the one was when Aaron had set her camera on like auto mm. in the basement. Mm-hmm. It didn't mm-hmm. even make sense. Yeah. But it was still so badass. Like yeah. that scene was really kind of like a highlight of the movie for me. Yeah. Just because of the setup and the anticipation of it and the way that it was like the strobe light as she attacked him and everything, and then mm-hmm. it got super brutal. That was a really well pulled off scene, I thought. And then the blender on Felix's head. Oh gosh, man! That whole that whole, whole scene. kitchen scheme, yeah, scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was rough. She was, yeah, because it wasn't like Bruce Lee fighting two fighters and not getting touched. Like there right. were, it was a battle to the death. That's the way yes. I see it. With 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 someone that's a little bit more experienced in in that and. And two people that weren't, you know, like I felt like they played that part very well. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think uh, most of the action stuff in this one was very well choreographed. What'd you think of the ending? Oh, um, yeah. So I felt like I knew the, the partner was in on it when I saw the younger brother or whoever was in on it, the, the um, Felix, mm-hmm. Felix and Z. So I, you, you kind of felt like you knew that that had to be the case or that he was, that he was going to show up dead or something like something was going to happen. But um, I didn't expect her to find out on the call or on the phone, which, you know, definitely was like, Oh, she, she she's in trouble yeah. now, yeah. especially cause you know, she's a bona fide badass, mm-hmm. you know, like just, man but which he um, didn't even realize no at that he, point. he had no idea that damn fool but when she fight when when she's fighting felix and and z you know at the end that whole scene was like there's there's a movie out there called old boy and this i think it's south korean film and the that version of it and there's a hallway scene that's shot and, and he's fighting a group of guys. Right. And, and so you're watching from like the side. So the hallway's going left to right on your screen and, and he, you're seeing it from that angle. And it's just, it was a cool shot. Cause he's like fighting and it's not, it's not professional karate fighting. It's not professional fighting. There's some real you know, punches being thrown that look right, but like, it's not like some master that's, doing it but he's getting the job done by like he's grinding it out and he's doing bulldog and and that ending reminded me of that scene so much because it was just we're gonna grind this fucking fight out until whoever wins wins it was definitely like a fight to the death kind of thing but when she slams the blender on that dude's head and oh man but then you know the she she gets the chick but then you find out that her old dude Crispin, that was his name, right? Crispin mm-hmm. was was in on it, and he's like doing all this speech, and like she's yeah. not saying anything. Yeah, you know, he is just like giving the speech, like he's explaining what happened. She was supposed to be witness. He didn't realize that she was a badass. You know, this and that, and then she was just basically like, "No, fuck you." He said, "Why?" And she said, "Why the fuck not?" And she stabs him in the eye and then immediately gets fucking shot. Yep. By the cops. Right in the back. Who finally showed up. That finally showed up. And it was just like, I'm not even mad at that. Like, that that made me jump. Because, like, I, I, that twist, the big twist of the film was that he was in it, which I thought, ah, that's kind of lame. 
yeah. but then boom, she got shot and it was just like, wait, what the fuck? Like I had to rewind it. What did I miss? Like what's happening? But no, it was what it was. Yes. And I also thought that it was a very professional ending that they made you forget about that ax hanging over the door until they cut to the cop oh, casually dude. walking towards the front door. And then you immediately know what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> just layered. It was just layered, yeah. well thought out mm-hmm. scenes. And, and, you know, I think that we've definitely watched movies where they wrote the story based off of like one specific scene, almost like they had a scene in their head and then they wrote left and right the, to the beginning and to the end. And they may have done this with that ending piece but they did it very well like the the first part of this film i had no beef with what's you know i don't think any major beef at all and then um you know that was the end of the the film basically right there and and within that you find out that felix is is uh well i guess you know early on but she finds out that he's he's part of it then he finds out that crispin's part of it and then she's shot and the surprise is she shot and the surprise is the cops dead by the ax. It's booby trapped on the door. Yeah. Chef's kiss. That was, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And I mean, really overall, I think anybody listening probably has picked up on the fact we both thought this was a really well done, well-made movie. Yeah. I think that, you know, it's almost a disservice to call it a B movie. Yeah. But the fact that it was made, you know, outside of the Hollywood system on yeah. what was a very, very small budget for 2011 and then was able to kind of prove itself and get wide distribution and get the payoff is just kind of a cool story. I mean, that's what, what B movies have really already been about is I have this idea that nobody else would let me make. So I'm going to do it myself. Right. And now I'm going to find some distribution channel that, that gets me that wider exposure with it. And then it'll either make or break the success and uh this one made it so yeah yeah, yeah it, it it for b movie it which is considered maybe lesser quality or whatever like this held strong from the very beginning scene until the very end like yeah. i was i was there for it that whole time and that's difficult to do especially nowadays especially with my attention span but this one this one definitely had it so i would definitely recommend this film to anyone that asked me. Same. You ready for my story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's it for today's episode. If you've listened this far, then thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed it. We're always looking for new ideas, so if you have any questions, comments, or movie suggestions, please send us an email at thehorrificpod at gmail.com. Or hit us up on the IG. That's what the kids call Instagram. Just search for The Horrific Podcast. Thanks for listening. Okay, so... Full disclosure, I didn't watch this movie until last night. We had other stuff what? going on. I wasn't feeling well over the weekend, and then um, we had dinner plans the night after. Like, didn't happen until last night. So I watch it. It's one where I enjoyed the movie, but also it was a graphic home invasion movie. So obviously, before I went to bed, you're triple checking that everything's locked 100%. up, right? Yeah. You're like, I'm not messing around. I'm not making those mistakes. I just mm-hmm. watched a bunch of people do the dumb things in a movie, so I'm going to do the smart things. And if you're watching on Pluto TV, you're doing it during commercial break, which mm, I may or may not yeah. have done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we go to bed. Everything's normal. I've got like a lot going on at work today, so I'm kind of in my head. It's taking me a while to fall asleep. Eventually, I get there. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning to the sound of a loud crack. Oh, That sounded like it came from either inside the house or right next to it. Oh, shit. Like, it sounded like a tree branch snapping off. So, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm like, did something fall? Like, is is there a storm? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on? And then I hear, like, this knocking. Uh. That sounds like it's coming from, like, right below the bedroom. Uh. Like somebody knocking on a door. And so... Obviously, Sarah's awake, 
the dog's freaking out. Yeah. We pull up the Nest camera, and I can see that I've got alerts for porch, side of house, and backyard. Oh, shit. And so... And, like, your backyard is kind of, like... It's small. You yeah. got to... You got to... You got to get in there. Like yes. it's all in yeah. one. Yeah. 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 In the backyard, it's like the fence is on top of like a retaining wall. So yeah. it's quite high up. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah. And so um, I look at my phone and I'm looking at those alerts and I can see the order they came in. So I see there's a guy randomly that knocked on the front door. There's a guy who walked through the courtyard, which we have a locked gate on the side. Mm-hmm. And then he went up to the back door, like into the kitchen and knocked. And then just walked around the backyard. And when he hit the far side, the neighbor's motion sensor lights came on. Oh, shit. And then he just turned around and walked off. Oh, shit. And so so I'm seeing that. I'm like, okay, there was somebody, like, in the yard trying to get into the house. Obviously, I get up. I get a shirt on. I have a gun safe on my nightstand. Mm -hmm. It's a fingerprint-controlled one. Oh, nice. And God bless Safe Tech. Because that fingerprint recognizer never works when I'm trying to, like, get the gun out to clean it Mm -hmm. or if I'm going to go to the range or something. I always have to try it, like, 25 times, and then it finally goes. Of the, like, five times where something scary has happened at night, it's worked on the first try every time. (laughs) Maybe. So the thing pops. I'm armed. Because I just watched this movie. I'm like, if somebody's coming in this house, I'm not screwing around. No. Right? Like. I'm taking this very seriously Mm -hmm. and there's not going to be any amount of, well, maybe we'll just open the door and see what he wants. It's like, no, like we're in defense mode right now. Yeah. I see where he's at. And so of course, Sarah was losing her mind Uh and she's looking at her phone and she keeps saying stuff that doesn't sound right based on what I saw. He's like, he's at the front door. He's at the front door. I'm like, no, he was at the front door like five minutes ago. Yeah. Is he back? She's like, well, no, I think he's at the front door now. And I'm like, no, look at your app. Nobody's at the front door right now. She's like, oh, okay. And then she's following me as I'm going out of the room to go down the stairs. Oh, shit. And she's like, he just went left. He just went to the neighbor's house. She told me the neighbor's name, so I know which one it was. And she's like, he's over there. I bet she's trying to get – or he's trying to get in his house. I bet he's in that backyard. And you know how the neighbor on – like if you're coming out of my house on the left? Uh Uh-huh. His backyard isn't fenced all the way around? The one that was trying to, like, get the whole lot? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so there's like our fence, and there's like a gap, and then his house, and it's like dark and scary back there. Mm-hmm. And so I step out, and there's nobody there. So I look back there, and I'm like, "Oh man, I bet he's back there." So I'm like feeling the adrenaline mm-hmm. at this point, mm-hmm. you know. And I've still got the gun in my pocket. I'm standing on my porch. I'm like, I'm not starting anything, but. I'm going to make sure this situation gets resolved. I'm about to finish it. Yeah. And so I stand there for a minute and I don't hear anything at all. And so then I step forward a little bit where I could see like the front side of the house because it's blocked on the far side, but you could probably like climb over. And so I'm watching and I'm just standing there for a while and nothing happens and nothing happens and nothing happens. And so then I check the app and I see he didn't go back to that side. He went the other way. Oh. So then I step down off the porch and I look down the sidewalk and there's nobody. He's just gone. Yeah. So then, um, you know, obviously it's still the heart's pounding. You know, I got like the full yeah. adrenaline rush. And I go around and look and he has ripped the pickets off the gate. What? And climbed through. Oh, my God. So that was like the loud crack that woke me up was like the dude just straight up ripped open the wooden fence. Holy shit. To climb into the backyard. Yeah. And so like, I have no idea what's going on, what he wanted, what he was trying to do. Um, And then Sarah is like calling the police and I'm just like, we'll we'll see you. Good luck. You you can wait up for him. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) exactly. To be uh, fair, it's a big city that you live yeah, in yeah, too and yeah. yeah but also a city that has voted repeatedly to defund said police yeah. force but whatever mm-hmm. um so then i came back inside i like watched all the video again just to make sure i understood what happened it's like okay clearly he came to the front door he knocked immediately went around the side so i think he was probably just looking to see if a light would come on when he knocked and then i think he was trying to force the gate open 
but it was locked. So he just ripped it Fuck. and then went into the backyard and knocked there too. But he didn't like try to get in or anything. He just went over kind of to like the far. I think he was trying to see what was on the other side of the house where the fences without the gate to see if there's like another door or something. Oh, okay. So thankfully that neighbor's motion sensor light came on. Cause that seems to holy have been the thing shit. that made him, you know, get out. Yeah. But like, holy crap. Fuck, and man. So my, my gates busted. I got to do something about it tonight. Mm. <laughs> you know, cause shit. it's just like open to the world. Yeah. And, um, you put, you put, uh, two by four with nails through it. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, like, so that's where I was going next was, uh, so after all this happens, clearly I'm not falling asleep again. Right. And every little noise in the house or outside or the AC or the dog snoring or anything, you know, I'm just like immediately like, where, where are they? Where is he? <laughs> you know, and yeah. like popping yeah. up in bed. And so I was sitting there thinking like, I feel like having seen that movie prepared me to be battle ready. I think so. And so, like, in the moment, there was no question of, like, what should we do? It's like, I'm getting strapped up. I'm going downstairs. Like, this, oh, we're not going to play around with this situation and see what yeah. happens. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then as I was laying in bed, I was thinking, well, with that gate open, what what can I do to secure things? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, maybe I should put down some nails on the other side of the gate. I'm just saying, <laughs> dude. I'm just saying. I'm seriously, I, I really think, like, that could do that could be a thing because like they're not going to expect that we know about it because the movie yeah, but i yeah. wouldn't have thought about it otherwise well and my oh, thing with it is right. too is because i did have ideas for things i could do mm-hmm. with that gate in case somebody tried to come back but i'm just like man if i did like an annoying amount of damage how much more likely would he be to destroy more stuff around the house at that point you know so so I don't know. the crack was him taking the what what the cops say Oh, it was nothing. Just joke. Just no, I mean, it was just uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let a patrolman know. We'll, we'll patrol. See if we can get somebody yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Did you say I'm fixing to vote to defund you again? Um, <laughs> no, no. I said I'm team fire department anyway. Yeah. Fuck. No, Sarah called them. I didn't because I knew they wouldn't do anything. When they got there, you say to her, "Hey, you did this. You got to talk to him. I got warrants." The, oh no, they didn't the, come. The side just, of your just house. Just so everyone's clear, they didn't come and oh. won't ever. <laughs> Damn. So the yeah. side of your house, though, you know, you have your glass, yeah, you know, with a little courtyard. Was is was that just like you know, no blinds? Correct. Sheesh. Yeah. Oh, so. we need to get that tenant. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Uh. But the good thing too, I think, is like how your house, house specifically, like is is designed, where like you might be able to kind of look from up. Yes. As you're going down, like, and they wouldn't necessarily see, maybe. I, I don't know. But, geez, man. Yeah. Having the cameras Fuck. is really helpful because there's not that many ways you could get, like you were saying, into the backyard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we had a pretty clear view of, like, every step of the way. But it just, Good that man. was just such, like, a disquieting experience all around, you know? And Can I tell you something that what you should do? Yeah. This just came to me. I don't know why people don't do this more often. You should get a creepy mask. It did cross my mind. Did it? So you put yeah, the creepy I mask on, about and so that. you look through the door, and they don't see what you look like, which I think yes. would make me less scared, but they see this fucking weird sheet mask or some shit. Yes. And they're like, you know, and you just sit there, and they say something, and you, you got to tilt your head, you know? Yeah. Like you're confused. <laughs> and you go back, you cock the gun, dude, they're gone. They'd yeah. probably, probably be gone before gun. Yeah. Well, I was thinking like, even if I just, um, if I could get down into the like living room and somebody was outside mm-hmm. and they looked inside and saw that mask. Yeah. That'd freak them out. A hundred percent. But that, that this was all just me like, you know, entertaining myself while I was trying to fall asleep. It was Sheesh. obviously I'm not, I'm glad the situation worked out the way that it did. No mm-hmm. one was hurt and no permanent damage was done outside of a little bit of work I got to do on the fence. Yeah. But it was still disturbing. And you know what? Fuck, fuck, whatever made that happen on the same yeah. goddamn day that you watched this film, dude. I am. Yeah, right? What I'm are the odds? Hot right now. You know what I mean? Like, I got a headache from my blood pressure, I think. 
<laughs> this had me pissed that that was same day. Yeah. I swear to God, I checked my locks halfway watching that during a yeah. commercial break. Like, I wasn't shitting around. I went and made sure that the sunroom sliding door had that extra piece of wood in there. For, <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. And yeah. for this to happen, I yeah. shit myself, dude. Yeah. Yep. It was not, not ideal. Damn. So. So anyway, uh, talking about the motion sensor lights earlier and me saying that, you know, that this was going to be part of my, (laughs) my notes, I, I have, uh, I have a couple different options in my cart right now. I'm still, I'm just trying to decide which ones I'm actually going to get. Jeez Louise, man. So, yeah. Uh, when you asked earlier, like, how are you doing today? I wanted to say. Pretty fucking so tired, stressed. I'm about to pass out yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I was up all night. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Uh, Just make Sarah stay up. Well, that's not good. No. Yeah. She would be <laughs> asleep before I finish the sentence. <laughs> Hey, do you yeah. want to take stay up and take the first shift? <laughs> yeah. Or you could just... Did she? Was she able to go back to sleep? Yeah. Oh, damn. I was going to say, Eventually, if not, dude, yeah. if not, you, you would... Uh, I would just pay your neighbor, like, be like, hey, I'll literally give you a hundred bucks if you come... Like put a hoodie on and just do my motion, <laughs> like just so she has to do first watch. Yeah. Go to sleep, you know it's just the homie, and then yeah. she does first watch. Yeah.